tonyfromcassettecomeback.com. And I've still got a little bit of a cold. It's real stinker, this one. Can't get rid of it. But anyway, it kind of helps because the topic of today's video is... Mm, bush. And what I mean by bush is... Bush cassettes. Now, outside of maybe the EU, but certainly out of England, outside of England, you, you maybe have not heard of Bush. And um, it's one of these brands. I, I grouped together Bush, Alba, Goodman's, Amstrad, as sort of entry level, cheapest chips, you know, low quality electronics. But uh, with Bush, it supposedly was never always that way. Um, in the 50s onwards, you know, they supposedly made very good radios and televisions and then they got bought out and the, the brand was cheapened. But, um, yeah, so we're going to start off with this one. Now, these are currently available, brand new in the UK, in a high street catalogue shop called Argos. And they're not cheap. These are, oh, you know, I should have researched this, but these are about £10 for four. I'll, uh, I'll pop a, a link in the description, but... Uh, yeah, so let's just open these up and have a look at them. So they come in a cardboard box. They're not individually wrapped inside. And they look like that. There we go. Very plain. Let's have a look what it says. The tape should be wound snugly. Keep the recorder pin controller clean, avoid prolonged exposure to excessive, excessive heart. Good, uh, good quality control here. Okay, punch out the remove from it. Okay, so, yeah. Now, I've already read something about these ones. I mean, they look okay, I guess, you know. Um, they're kind of what you expect, is a C0 shell with a, a printed slip sheet. But I've... Uh, I've read some stuff about these on tape heads. You might want to Google it, Bush Cassettes Tape Heads, where uh, one of the gentlemen that tried these out liked them so much that uh, he ran his truck over them. Mm. So that's what Bush Cassettes are currently... Let's just I'll give you a look around the box because some people say I never really show them everything. So, you know, four audio cassettes... 60 minute report recording, keep the music playing. Really? What happens at 61 minutes? Um, delivers a rich, powerful sound, recording again and again, and easy to use. Entertainment guaranteed. Oh yeah, see I just dropped that on the floor, that was maybe a Freudian slip. I didn't mean to do that, but I dropped them on the floor, because like I say, these are supposedly terrible. But we'll find out. But here's the crux of this video. Bush, cassettes, Apart from this one, very good, and the cheap and plentiful here in the UK. So let's go through some ones that are decent. Now, firstly, is this style SF as in TDK SF? You know, ooh, low noise, not just high output, super high output. You know, sharp dynamic sound, super quality, advanced cassette mechanism. These were very cheap in the 90s. I remember buying these mid-90s. And the thing was, you know, you, you, when I was younger, I bought cassettes that I would record on. Then there was cassettes for other people. And a lot of people didn't care about the quality of tape. You know, as long as they could recognise the music, good enough. And that's why, you know, at this stage, when I was buying these in the mid-90s, I'd bought my first Technics 3 head off a car boot sale, and I started to appreciate good recordings. So at this time, I was mostly... Uh, a sort of SA man, that was my go-to cassette, the SA, but for other people, as long as it sounded okay, and I remember these were everywhere and plentiful, you'd find them by the till in a basket at supermarkets, 10 for like £4.99, and I bought some, how bad could they be, and I remember making a recording of Dire Straits Brothers in Arms on one of these, and being astounded by actually how good they sounded. Let's just open it up. I mean, this one's pretty battered anyway. But the first thing about these, and I need to do this, wow, look how loose that tape is from brand new, is the smell. These had a very distinctive smell. They're not chrome. Yeah, they had a distinctive smell, but how much more plain can you get for a cassette? I mean, look at that. I mean, that's pretty plain. However, just as a note, these are both 60s. 
Look at the tape pack on that bush. And on the other one, which is a 60, these are, sorry, sorry, that's not a 60, that's a 90. Sorry, shut up, scratch, hang on a second, hang on, hang on. Huh, look. I thought I wasn't going mad. The actual wrapper says 60 on it, but the actual tape inside it is 90. Huh, well, that's a nice little surprise. But uh, yeah, no wonder the tape pack looks bigger because it's 90. But yeah, I mean, if we look at these two shelves, you know, the the rollers are different, the hubs are different, but, you know, the, the so you can tell the cut from the same cloth, but um, trust me on this one. This is a good cassette. Let me just put this back. I mean, look, you can see the case is a lot higher than the J card is. It's like, yeah, they, and they put a 90 and a 60 wrapper. Mm. Yeah, so they were cheap, and you'd think with good reason, but... Then we go to the next generation, which are these ones. Now, why have I got three? Because, believe it or not, these are three different cassettes. Let's look at them. We've got the top one, which has not got a red blob in the middle of the SF, and it's in a slim case. Then we've got the middle one, which doesn't have the red blob in the SF, but it's in a thicker case. And then we've got the third one, which has got a red blob in the SF. So... Just to look at it, you think these are all the same, but they're not. Let's open these up. So, let's have a look. Sharp, dynamic sound, superb quality recording, playback, advanced cassette mechanism, which is pretty much exactly what it said on the back of the earlier one. Are they all the same? Slightly different layout, but Strand Europe. And Strand, um, Strand are an interesting company. They, they basically were, if we can make money out of it, we'll make money out of it. And... All, they have their own brand of cassettes, but Strand were also behind the BBC line of cassettes, which uh, I haven't done a video on, but I have touched on, which were basically a mixture of Saihan and, um, and Green Corp and uh, what was the other one? Forward, you know, but yeah, Strand. I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't behind the Wilbur's tapes, but yeah, the, the layout is slightly different at the back, and again, this one, pretty much the same layout as this one, but... If we open them up, let's take the slim case with the red blob and have a see what wonders lurk beneath this. I've brought a knife this time because I'm, I'm sick of trying to fight with J cards. So, we open this one up. Right, so, let's have a look at this and do some detective work. Who made this? The hubs look like Gold Star, but they're not. The shell has a Saiham feel about it. So that's number one. That's what the stickers are like. So that's cassette number one. Let's open cassette number two, which is the thick version. And I'm happy to open this one because I know exactly what's in the thick version of this. It's not, you see, I've been proven wrong again. This one basically looks the same as this one but with a different slip sheet. Now in the thick ones I've had before, let's just open the third one and see if we can get lucky. This is a slim one without the red blob in the SF. Nope, it's the same as this one. Only one's in a thick case and one isn't in a thick case. But all of these seem to come from either Green Corp or forward because of these hubs and the reason I'm disappointed in this big one is that I've had these in fact I'm going to pause quickly and show you what I was expecting I'll be back in a second okay so I haven't got any of them at hand but I'll show you a picture instead do you see that look at them hubs that is racks so even though now in one wrapper we've got three cassettes which are all the same, basically, apart from one's got a different slip sheet, you can also get a Rax cassette in one of these Bush wrappers. And then the next generation of these we go to is this one, which I'm not going to open because basically all the ones I've had are these, even though it's the same blurb at the back, sharp dynamic sound, and it's still strand, they basically have got these in inside them. So... Yeah, so they look a bit anonymous right now, but the point is, if we look at SF, yeah, it says Superferric. That's a bit of a claim, 
But let's put these into the Revox, buy some up, and you can have a listen to why, even though they may look middling, they may be from a manufacturer that's not known for making ultra great tape, but these SFs actually do live up to the name. In fact, look, the J-card designs, look, the, the, yeah, they're different. And that one's in a different rotation. Yeah, the, the, the consistency, you know, it's like the bits as but And yeah, regardless, let's put this modern one in, first generation, and let's try one of these in there. And you can have a listen to yourself why I think these are really under the radar great cassettes. Well, apart from this one, but anyway, let's go. The truth. Okay, so the first one I put in is the modern one, which I've never actually tested. I've just read a lot of bad things about it. I put it in the Revox, I've let it calibrate it. And it's calibrated it, so uh, that's a good thing. So this track I'm using is from the YouTube audio library. It's called Butchers. Now I've picked this not because it's a particularly amazing song, but particularly because it's lots of bass, lots of treble. And if something's going to distort or show dropouts, it will be this song. So let's have a listen to Butchers and see how this modern bush sounds. This is distorting. I'm going to bring the level down. I'm going to bring it down to zero. I'll press the right button. Okay, so now, all right, at plus four, this sounded distorted. At zero, I didn't think it sounded that bad, actually. Um, like I said, the deck could be doing a lot of it, but uh, the tape itself is a nice neutral brown. It's shiny and well calendared. Um, I don't know if these are worth two pound a cassette or whether they're better than you know, the currently available Max How You Are, but that didn't sound quite as disastrous as I was expecting. Hmm, yeah. Draw your own conclusions. Now, this is the first generation. This is a 90. So I remember these being good. Like I say, I mean, back in the day, let me just uh, play time, 90 minutes, this one. Let's just align this one up. But... Uh, Back in the 90s, hang on, let's fast forward it a bit first, and let's try again. Back in the 90s when I was buying these, like I said, to give to other people, I was so surprised by the quality of them that I actually used them for, like, mixtapes I was going to have in the car because they were cheap and plentiful and I thought they sounded well. Uh, I, I really rated these, so I give them to other people and I use them, like I say, for myself for mixtapes. So that's calibrated up. Let's listen to the same track again. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start off at zero and then I'm going to see if I can push this up to plus four. So, again, this is Butchers. Let's have a listen.
Yeah, they're as good as I remember. Did you see that? Plus four. Sometimes the odd peak at plus six. But this this sounded like the source. This yeah, it's got more hits, but this didn't distort like the modern one was distorting at four. This was keeping its own, keeping the base there, controlled without distorting and not losing the travel and rolling off comfortably at plus four. Very dark tape on this. Very dark and shiny. Super ferric. I said there was a distinctive smell. Could these be cobalt doped? Possibly, but you heard that yourself. For such a boring, innocuous looking cassette, that performed well. So let's go to the next generation again. This is what you'll get basically in the last generation wrapper I showed, which I never opened, or it could be most probably in the blue with the red blobs wrapper, but probably the most commonly available bush. So let's just get this one aligned up. So like I say, yeah, uh, there are a few versions of this. I've had the Rax version. Some people have said there's a Saiham version. I've never had the Saiham version of this. But again, it seems to be pot look what you're getting inside the actual wrapper. I mean, if you think about it, I'll go into a bit more later, but could this be why, you know, in the later stages of audio cassettes where they're all bitsers, they didn't have windows so you could actually see the cassette inside. The reason why all the wrappers were opaque was simply because they didn't know what was going to be in there. They'd just use up what they could. And they just wanted to keep it consistent, so they kept the wrappers all the same, even though the cassettes underneath could be quite different. So we're going to start this one off again with butchers, but we're going to start this off at plus four. And if it starts to distort, I'll knock it down. Just, just watch the VU meters. Right, let's go. With the right song, possibly. Have a look at the tape in this. Yep, the tape looks almost identical to this version. I, I'd say that these have the same tape in. And like I say, super ferric on the wrappers. Yeah, I'd be tempted to say they are, judging by that performance. So there we go. Cassettes, at least in the UK, they're cheap, plentiful, and for me, these ones at least. You put me in a chair, you play me some music off one of these, and you say, hey, this is an AD, and I know this is a big claim. I wouldn't be able to say, no, that's definitely not an AD, it doesn't sound anything like an AD to me. These take good level. They don't distort, they take, the, they take the bass and the treble, and there's no dropouts. These are very good cassettes. Now, like I say, just, just watch for these hubs. Just look for them. They look like Gold Star, but they're not. 
If you're in the UK, you're going to find cassettes made by Alba, Goodmans, Amstrad and some Woolworths that all seem to have these hubs. I don't know whether Strand sorted all of them or, you know, they, they would just go into the same manufacturer. And the manufacturer, like I say, I've not seen a definitive. There's one of three manufacturers that have been mentioned. Green Corp of Australia, Forward of Hong Kong, or Soda Nica. I don't know which one they are. But all I can say is if you find the bushes with this type of wrapper on it, the bushes with this type of wrapper on it, or the bushes with this type of wrapper on it, you're getting a really, really good basic ferric. And I say basic, you know, the, the performing light super, the only thing that's stopping me saying, yeah, super ferric, super, super, is because no doubt some of you will have bought these and used them on a deck which might not be as good as a Revoc and said, oh, the crap. And I don't want arguments, but from this testing here, if, like I say, this tape was inside an AD shell, and I was asked to do the same review, I'd say, oh, it's good tape, AD, yeah. This one isn't as bad as I thought it would be, but again, this one distorted. This one can't take the levels like this. It's a very different tape, Chinese sourced, I imagine, but uh, to my ears, it's still better than the NAC 465, and it's not a Type 0, it's just you, you can't give this a lot of signal. But again, would you buy this when they come with the four pack and cost more around two pounds something each? Would you buy these over a max LUR? Or like I say, you can get these for about that same price, two to three pound each, quite easily. And these are a much better cassette. So uh, you pays your money, you takes your choice. But like I say, these cassettes, Bush, don't discount them. They're very, very good. So just one last thing before I go. Thanks again to everyone that tunes into the Retro Nouveau. I'm on on Sunday, 12 till 2 UK time at fouledcoastradio.org. I'll put a banner at the end. If you're not doing anything, just tune in through the radio and, uh, you know, the internet, I should say. You know, send me a tweet. Bing me an email. I might put a request on for you. Who knows? And I'd also like to say especially thanks to those of you who go to the community tab of this channel uh, where I post little updates and stuff and who actually go to Mixcloud and listen to the recordings of the Retro Nouveau because it does get them into the top 100 globally quite normally. And um, I'm very proud of that because, you know, like I say, this channel is hemorrhaging money for me lately. It's it's hit a plateau on, on the earnings and it's just, you know, I've opened up 15, 16 pounds worth of cassettes here and this video will not make that money back. So imagine what happens when I open the likes of, you know, Metal Vertex. <clears throat> anyway. So thanks again for everyone. Thanks for being a wonderful community. I'm trying to answer all the comments I can, but I'm getting inundated with comments on there and tweets and pings on my Facebook Messenger for my page and my personal, and I've got the group. So if I don't reply to you, don't think I'm ignoring you. It's just it's getting a bit overwhelming. But I thank you for doing it all the same, unless you're a troll, in which case you can knob off. Anyway, please like and subscribe. And until next time, happy taping. Bye-bye.